Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Retro Game Theory Comp video, we're going to be discussing NVIDIA's Volta architecture. Despite the fact we don't really know much about it, the rumor mill is already churning. Of course, to put things into some level of context, currently we have Pascal, and while AMD is certainly able to compete with, let's say, the GTX 1060 or below, the higher end lineup, AMD are not really able to do much about. They do, of course, have the Fury lineup, but the 4GB of HBM1 memory is just prohibitive. Therefore, really, if you're going for high-end graphics cards, you need to go with like a GTX 1070, a 1080, or even a TIE, or possibly, but not very likely now, a Titan. So, AMD are going to be countering with Vega, which we do know is a brand new architecture. There is, however, Volta. Now, Volta is also going to be a brand new architecture, but... From what we understand, and these are rumours coming from FUDZilla.com, so they do of course come through the, through the rumour mill, excuse me, so, you know, pinch of salt and all of that jazz. They are going to be utilising a 12nm fabrication process. Just to clarify, Vega is still going to be on 14nm. From what we understand, Volta's die shrink could give it quite a performance gain. And in fact, if you compare it against the 12nm process versus the 16nm process, this by the way being Global Foundry's production, you achieve about a 15% improvement in performance while consuming and sucking down 50% less power. This is actually really important because A, it means you can obviously fit more CUDA cores, in the case of NVIDIA, into the same die space, and B, you take less energy for those CUDA cores to run at a given clock speed. From what we have heard, NVIDIA are going to be utilising an updated TSMC 16nm design. The whole purpose of this is basically AMD are already showing a lot of cards when it comes to Vega. So NVIDIA are saying, okay, thanks for that, we're going to pretty much leapfrog you. You're automatically going to say, well, okay, but when is Volta going to come out? And there's the kind of question mark. It's probably not going to be until, until 2018. So really, the only thing we have left is Pascal. But we'll get into that in just a second. From what we understand about both architectures, there is going to be the utilization of GDDR6 or HBM2. So in theory, we could see up to speeds of, let's say, 16 gigabits per second from a single pin, which is really impressive. That means memory bandwidth is going to go up through the bloody roof, even on an hour bus. This is really good because it means that even if you have a 256-bit interface, you can have really high clock speeds, I'm uh, sorry, really high memory bandwidth speeds, and obviously you don't need like loads of memory chips, and it just makes sense. As I said, it's a bit weird because Volta is not going to happen, from what we understand, until 2018. Obviously, there could be a surprise announcement, but it's looking very unlikely. However, there are still rumours that we will be seeing a Pascal refresh this year. When that happens, I just don't know. And I don't imagine it's going to be any time soon. It's probably going to be happening like three to four, maybe even five months down the line. I say that because the tie has just been released, and let's face it, if NVIDIA let's say next month, were to say, by the way, we're going to be refreshing our entire lineup, and uh, you know that $600 card you just bought? Guess what? People are going to be way too pissed off. So it makes sense, at least in theory land, which we don't always live in reality, um, that we're going to see it later. So in other words, it's probable that we're going to see Vega, then we're going to see a refresh, and then after that, NVIDIA are going to finally release Volta. To be honest, I wouldn't be surprised if Volta is faster than Vega because, well, let's face it, it makes sense given that it's got a several months lead time and words, it's a newer architecture. Just like it wouldn't make much sense to me if Vega is slower than the equivalently priced graphics card from NVIDIA. So it's like just kind of how things go. In the end, though, both companies are going to be vying for your hard-earned money, which is a good thing. And this is one of the reasons that I'm actually quite happy that Ryzen is quite successful because ultimately it means that we get better products as a customer. Would you rather live in the land where only one company was producing graphics cards or processors or what have you? Or would you rather have two or three successful companies, each one trying to outdo the other? I know which one I'd rather have. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. It's been a bit of a shorty, but still, I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.